So uh, I've been asked to give you a bit of information on the natural uh, uh, components of this estuary, but it's something that I'd normally speak to for about an hour, so here we go, hang on. Uh, so I'm going to start off, talk a little bit about estuaries in generally, a little bit of a lecture, uh, and then a lot more about the habitats and inhabitants of the Tamar estuary. So the first thing, if this is going to run, okay. So this video or animation represents how the uh, sea level has changed over the last 50,000 years. And it was constructed for another purpose, but it does show us how the uh, shoreline of northern Tasmania has changed over that time. And as we heard earlier, around 43,000 years ago was when the first pedestrian land bridge uh, allowed humans to come into the landscape. But continually through the last uh, millennia, that sea level has changed as the climate changes, ice gets taken up or released from the ice caps. Uh, unfortunately, it goes for a minute 30 and I can't fast forward it. Uh, but the main thing here is we're coming into the uh, last glacial maximum or the last ice age. And you can see down there, it's likely the Tamar Valley stayed relatively ice free and would have had a fast flowing river running through it, uh, which emptied out in somewhere well out into Bass Strait. Uh, by this stage, uh, the sea level is rising again. Bass Strait is reforming. And if you just keep an eye on roughly where the Tamar is, you can see that somewhere between, the, the literature says, 13,000 years and 6,500 years ago, the sea level came up to its current height. And that it means that the Tamar Valley uh, was flooded and we've ended up with a drowned river valley. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that again, it's available at the Royal Park Art Gallery in the First Tasmanians Gallery. Okay, so first thing, we need a definition of what an estuary is. It's a semi-enclosed body of water within which seawater is measurably diluted by fresh water that has come off the land. Full stop, that's your definition. Typically, we have reduced impacts of tides, wind, wave, and ocean currents, and that allows for uh, different types of habitats to uh, um, reside in uh, mitigated conditions where they're out of the main weather. But I have put tides there, be, um, marked it, because that's something that the Tamar does not lack. You can either be a fully mixed or a salt wedge estuary. Now, in short, we're a fully mixed system, a salt wedge is a calmer system where salt water comes in on the tide and flows in under the fresh water and they don't generally mix. That's definitely not us. Sediments accumulate in estuaries, which creates habitats for our plants and animals. Uh, and there's a whole range of physical and chemical variables that uh, determine what each estuary is, no two are the same and also make it a fairly challenging place for our wildlife to live in. And as, so there's three types of estuary. You're either a drowned river valley, which we've already established we are, or you might be a barrier estuary or a saline coastal lagoon. Head down the east coast of Tassie to find one of those. Now, there's just a list of some of the physical and chemical characteristics that determine what any estuary is. And I've marked here bathymetry and tidal influences too that I'll, I'll raise later. And I've also added on, on the end here season because depending what time of the year you go out, the Tamar can be very different. Now, let's just hone in on uh, Kanamaluka. So we've already established 13 and a half thousand years or through to 6,000 years ago, it became a drowned river valley. I need another definition, I love my definitions. And I need to read this to you. So drowned river valleys, these estuaries are tidal, steep-sided and sheltered. They have a narrow intertidal zone around the margins. The main intertidal area consists of extensive mud and sand flats in the upper estuary. As the sediments accumulate and grow into the estuary, the basin of the estuary is filled in. That's the tamer, word for word. Other things, we now know it's an estuary, not a river. In the past, it was a river. Water went one way, fresh water, it carried a lot of stuff out to Bass Strait. Now, estuary, salt water's coming back in. 
we understand that our estuaries uh, uh, has a, set, a complex set of uh, uh, characteristics and some of those make it unique. We know, and you'll see some of the multiple habitat types in the estuary, we do know that there's a lot high biodiversity, particularly in the lower extents, and we also acknowledge that there's a lot of man-made impacts on the estuary. We've also already heard today around 15% of Tasmanian's landmass enters uh, the Tamar, mostly around Launceston, and whatever happens in the catchment affects water quality here in uh, Launceston, but also well out into Bass Strait. And uh, also, the Tamar is 70 kilometres long. It's not just this bit here. Uh, there's, uh, as we've heard, there's multiple councils and, and residents that uh, enjoy the estuary uh, right out to Bass Strait. And this, I just want to uh, take an aside. One of the things is we mentioned it's a fully mixed system. That's a mix of the seabed and uh, the tide, basically. And what you're looking at here is some seabed data I collected when I was at the Mar Maritime College. It goes from Beauty Point out to the heads. That's Beauty Point out to the heads. And along the length, you can see it undulates between about 10 metres and down to 53 metres. Now, that rough seabed mixed with a three or four metre tide coming in makes it like a washing machine. And so you get a fully mixed system uh, where you can measure differences in salinity along the length, but you're not going to get that salt wedge effect. And that's uh, at least typical right up through to the, Bass, uh, to the uh, Batman Bridge. Now, back on track. Okay, it is a harsh environment for our uh, wildlife to live in. In short, the salinity ranges from 35 to zero, that is full salinity through to zero parts or fresh water and everything in between, and it's not stable. It changes through the seasons. The temperature fluctuates greatly, and we have that large uh, tide coming in twice a day. Uh, that's a whole lot of water coming in twice a day, around 300 million cubic metres twice, and very strong currents. So now I want to show you some of the habitats that form in the estuary and some of the inhabitants. And again, this is only a snapshot, a real quick look at. The brown there represents silt, uh, unconsolidated sediments. And you can see that it takes up about 60% of the estuary. It is not only uh, here in Launceston. And it's sediment is not dead unless you tinker with it a lot. Uh, but also, it's an unusual habitat that nobody really wants to go and photograph. Uh, but here's a photograph I took at Deviat in 16 metres of water. Uh, you can see the soft sediments that have already been resuspended by my movement. But in the foreground down here, oh, sorry, wrong button, there's some red algae, there's a bit of brown algae in the background, and that thingy in the middle may be a sponge, it might be, who knows, alien. But unfortunately, because of the soft sediments that I'm in, as soon as I breathe, all of, they just uh, convection currents, uh, couldn't see a thing, went to the surface. Uh, the rest of the rolls, rubbish. Uh, so then wetlands, an emergent habitat type. You can see in the dark green, uh, and I'll just point out, uh, most of them are from, yeah, just about uh, Moriarty Reach south. And we've got great Phragmites at uh, Tamar, Tamar Island wetlands, but there's also a lot of uh, Spartina anglica, what are we calling that? Rice grass and introduce weed. But wetlands are important. They, uh, they uh, are a source of carbon for the uh, system. They also take up a lot of carbon. They, uh, they also tie up a lot of sediments. We also know that they're important for our wildlife. You've only got to go down to Tamer Island wetlands to see the amazing bird life that's there. And also, you can see the egret here. He's um, hunting fish. Uh, there's also, when you go through, you'll find reptiles, amphibians, uh, you've got macropods and a lot of fish in the estuary. Unfortunately, I poached this slide from another presentation and it's got an introduced pest species, but there are a lot of fish in the estuary and not all of them are bad. Uh, sand, so that's the yellow out towards the heads. Another unconsolidated habitat type of a larger grain size. Here we have a flounder, uh, 
pretty fish, but for me it's the uh, humps and hollows in the sand that speak volumes. That there represents uh, the fauna that lives in the sediments and also works over the sediments trying to eat the fauna living in the sediments. What would that be? Crustaceans, worms, mollusks. Uh, there's a flathead, I think, is it? Yeah. But we know that uh, flathead are an important recreational species and they use those soft sediment habitats. But also any of the darker brown colours, or, or sorry, grey colours, represent again in fauna. It's not a dead system there. Now this here has a larger grain size. This is down at Kelso. Uh, this is a tube anemone. Before this photo was taken, they were only known to be from the Bathurst Harbour in southwest Tasmania. It reflects how little we know about what uh, lives in our estuary. And then finally, although this isn't uh, sand, it's another form of unconsolidated substrate. Here it's shell and uh, gravel. And this is a type of soft coral uh, called a sea pen. It uh, stands about a half a foot high and it's got as much of its body below the surface as it does, as you can see. More importantly, the background is green and that green represents phytoplankton or the uh, primary production of the estuary. Estuaries are known to be very productive systems and uh, that is the basis of, uh, of the food web there and reflects also the high nutrient loads in the system. Seagrass, well effectively it's that same habit substrate but it now has that, that uh, modifier on it. Uh, there's many different species of uh, seagrass in the Tamar. They're important habitats for fish and you can just see a couple of fish off to the side. But also a range of different animals use it. Uh, we've got, uh, we could have a small commercial fishery here for abalone. Lots of different fish including your seahorse species and there's a cryptic crab there. And just in the, the photos there, there's three different species of uh, seagrass, just as an aside. Okay. Then we're out to reef, and reef are the pink and red bits out there at the front, but also there's reef down here under, Bas uh, under the Batman Bridge where you've got that very narrow area, 30 metres deep. Uh, the water currents just uh, keep the, the sediments uh, into the, pushes them into the bays. And so rocky reefs are like prime real estate, uh, wherever there's a hard surface you'll find high biodiversity. You've got these dense complex algal beds in shallow waters. Typically algal beds uh, are in the top 70 metres of our estuary where there's enough light to support photosynthesis. We've got one of the few remaining stands of giant kelp or macrocystis in Tasmania. Uh, this has been in decline for about 50 years. It could be that the East Australian current, which is nutri nutrient poor, is not providing the, the nutrients to keep those populations going. The, but here in the Tamar, being an estuary, you've got the nutrients. Maybe that's what's keeping it here. Again, reefs, lots of fish, including charismatics. Once you get down past 17 metres, the invertebrates start to take over. And here you've got a sponge garden with a few remnant uh, hardy uh, algae in amongst it. And then just to show you how little we know again, the bottom image with the fish in it, everything behind it is an animal. We don't know what all of those animals are. Uh, and the diver at the top, Megan Dykeman, was a, a QV Mag UTAS student. She picked up uh, 50, 56 corals, soft corals that you can see in the other images, found two new genus and four new species out of just 50 specimens. Now, if she had chosen any other taxa, guaranteed she'd find new species equally. So, love my soft corals, uh, but you've got things like uh, sea slugs. If your garden slugs look like that one up there, you might want to keep them in your garden. But we've got uh, giant uh, cuttlefish that the males are protecting eggs in the uh, rocky crevices, places like, places like Garden Island. You've got your crustaceans, lots of sea stars, and that is the snapshot. So in short, the Tamar is unique, but it is typical of a drowned river valley. Uh, we have these high biodiversity hotspots along the length. Uh, we do need to think of the system from catchment right through to the coastline. 
And if you do want to see some more of what's beneath the Tamar, some of the photography is on display now at the uh, Inveresk Museum and it will be swapped over next year for wetlands photography. So there you go, 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you.